Sometimes WordPress gets an undeserved bad reputation, but when you use it as a headless CMS and combine it with an amazing framework like Next.js, it's actually pretty sweet. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We'll show you how to set up a blog using WordPress and Next.js in just a few minutes. All right, so like we said, we're gonna use WordPress as a headless CMS. We're going to actually set up and install a WordPress instance in Hostinger, which is the sponsor for this video. We're gonna use Next.js to pull that data and we're gonna use GraphQL to be able to pull that data into our Next.js application. We are going to use some starter templates from, or a starter template from Colby Fayok on GitHub. So you have a link to that repository. That will basically take care of all the things we need. We'll just need to connect it with one endpoint, one URL to point to our actual, actual WordPress instance. So let's go ahead and dive on in. All right, so to help us set up this uh, Next.js and WordPress integration, we're gonna use the next WordPress starter template on GitHub. And this is from a good friend of mine and an amazing content creator named Colby Fayok. And this thing is basically just gonna be a project that is going to connect to WordPress. It's going to use the WordPress GraphQL API. We'll talk about GraphQL here in a second. It's going to query all the data, create the landing page for the blog post and the template, the dynamic template for each individual blog post itself. So it really takes care of everything we need. If you have WordPress, if you want to use Next.js, you can use this template, the starter, and have everything you need. So I'm going to go ahead and clone this thing. And by the way, you'll have a link to this repository in the description of the video. Uh, I'm going to CD into my code and my delete me repository or my folder. This is where I, I put stuff for testing and for demos and then delete it after. And then I'm going to uh, do a git clone on this repo. Once this is done, we'll open this up. So the next WordPress starter, we'll open this up in VS Code. If you're interested, new to VS Code, I've got tons of videos on customizing and uh, getting everything out of VS Code. So you can go and check those out. Uh, but after I got this open, uh, I've got a, a kind of a straightforward WordPress, or excuse me, Next.js setup here. And if we look inside of the package.json, there will be a function in here for Apollo client. So this is using the Apollo client to send GraphQL requests to the WordPress backend. Now, how do we know where that is? Well, it comes in an environment variable in Next.js. So if we come, I'm gonna close out the terminal here. And if we look inside of the GitHub repository, it says that we will need to add an env.local file. This is where we can do environment variables while we're testing in Next.js and then add this WordPress GraphQL endpoint. So let's go into our repository, add .env.local, add in the WordPress GraphQL endpoint. And this is the one single endpoint with GraphQL uh, of where you send all requests. So we will need to get this from our deployed version of WordPress, which we'll get to in a second. And then just to kind of explore a little bit inside of source, inside of pages, we've got a few things that are important. There is the post page. This thing is going to make a request in static props to get the paginated posts. So there's pagination already built in here, super neat. Um, it's gonna grab a series of posts and then use that to build out this post page. There is also under slash post, there is a slug, um, a dynamic route in Next.js, which is really neat. And this is for the individual post itself. This is gonna display all of the information for each individual post. So again, all of this stuff is taken care of. We can't run this yet because we don't have that property set in our uh, local file. So what we need to do now is go ahead and get set up with a deployed instance of WordPress. Now there are lots of different places that you can host a WordPress, uh, a WordPress site or WordPress for uh, the purpose of a headless CMS or a backend. Um, but we are going to use today's sponsor, which is Hostinger. Now Hostinger has a few different plans in here. And the thing that I really like for them one, if you pay over the course of uh, several months or a year or two, the price per month is a few bucks a month, which is really nice. And then in the premium and or business tiers, you can host up to 100 websites. So if you're a freelancer or if you're a developer that just has a few different sites, whatever the case may be, you can do all of that with one plan here on Hostinger. And don't forget, you can use the coupon code James to get a total of 90% off of the plan that you select. This is one of the cheapest plans that I've seen for hosting WordPress and especially for hosting multiple instances of WordPress. So I'm going to log in and get into my dashboard, log in with my GitHub account. And I will say the dashboard here 
is one of the better looking dashboards that I have seen. So I, I haven't done a ton with hosting WordPresses, WordPresses, uh, but I really like this one and I have enjoyed it so far. So I've got a premium shared hosting and a business shared hosting set up here or not set up. And so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get started with those. So I'm gonna go to the premium shared setup. I'm gonna start that setup process. By the way, if you choose either one of those plans, you get a free domain, so you can get your free domain there. And I'm gonna go ahead and start. And I'm going to use an existing domain. Now I have a domain uh, in Namecheap called jschallenges.com. Keep an eye out for that because I'm going to build out some content around JavaScript challenges and you might want to see that in the future. So I've got this one here. I'm going to go into manage and just show you uh, that I've customized the DNS in here. So this custom DNS is now going to point to the name server servers of hosting here. So we'll see that in a second. And I'm going to use my existing domain. That domain is JS challenges, if I spell it right, jschallenges.com. We'll continue in here. All right, that looks like it's good to go. All right, and then uh, we're gonna build a brand new website. We're not gonna migrate anything. We'll build a brand new one. They have a one-click install here for WordPress. Again, really good stuff here. So we'll do WordPress. It's gonna ask us what my email is for uh, the master account, and then I'll give it a password as well. So this is after this WordPress account or uh, installation finishes, we need a master account to be able to log into the, the WP admin portal and update posts and that sort of stuff. So that's what that is. So we'll continue. Um, we don't need a template. We actually don't care at all about the front end because we're just using this as a back end. So we can just leave it there. Uh, all right. So just to recap, this is jschallenges.com. It is based in North America, USA, which is where I am. We are installing the following CMS, uh, WordPress, and then my admin email is that email there. So uh, we'll let this run. It may take a minute or two, and then we'll see what we got. It's loading, so now I can talk. Everybody say hi to my special guest in the back. <laughs> this is what we do when things are loading. All right, so it looks like that thing has finished up. Let's go ahead and uh, go into the manage WordPress. That's what I wanna check out first, just to see that this thing is fully installed. It's set up. Um, I don't know what the uh, the wizard is. I'm just gonna go back to the dashboard here because I don't need to worry about SEO. This is just for the backend. And cool, so this thing uh, comes with a few different extensions and plugins and, and stuff installed, and you could kind of clean that up. If you're a WordPress person, you could decide what you want, what you don't want, all those things. But what we do want, I know for sure, is the GraphQL plugin. So let's take a look at the documentation and let's just see if he references that inside of here. So we need the WP GraphQL. This is a GraphQL API for WordPress. It basically just sits on top of the built-in API of WordPress and then adds GraphQL on top of it. So let's do a search for WP GraphQL inside of our WordPress dashboard inside of plugins, we will add new and then we'll give a search for WP GraphQL. Uh, cool, so there that is right here. Uh, we will go ahead and install that thing. And after it's installed, we'll need to activate it. So we'll make sure the thing is active and then uh, it'll be really cool. We'll have like a graphical interface where we can explore the different GraphQL inter endpoints, not interfaces, endpoints, and be able to see uh, how to query the data and what data gets returned. Uh, while it's installing, just so you know, there already is a Hello World post that is created. So it has some dummy data already created for you. We'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, but as soon as this finishes installing, we will activate it and then be able to start using it in our Next.js application. All right, so that thing has finished installing. Let's go ahead and activate this thing. And we'll see up here, I believe, we'll have a new tab for our graphical IDE. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that. So inside of here, uh, if you've ever used GraphQL before, you can, uh, you probably have seen like one of the graphical editors, but if I wanted to query uh, post maybe, um, so let's say we can uh, query with a post with a specific ID, we probably more likely would start with, ah, actually I'm in the wrong spot. Sorry, this should be posts instead of posts. So in here, get rid of the individual post if we query now our post and then uh, look for the title. Uh, or, see, what am I missing here? Edges, node, and then title. 
Does that seem to come out? Is that going to query all of them? Cool. So we see we've got one here that has a title of hello world, which is exactly what's in the dummy data inside of posts. So if we go to posts and we do all posts, all right, so we've got those posts there. I'm going to open up the control panel in Hostinger to show you uh, what we have there. And uh, there is a force HTTPS on here. So we do want this to be HTTPS. So we can install an SSL certificate. Let's go ahead and install that thing. That will make sure that we're able to access this from HTTPS JS challenges uh, com. So it's being installed. It will uh, automatically be forced on your domain when it's finished. So we can go ahead and check that. I think the processing of that needs to finish. So we'll come back to it in a second. Oh, cool. Already there. I didn't even have to pause the video. That thing is successfully enabled. So that's good. And then we can make sure that this is working uh, if we come to visit the site and then if I uh, copy paste that whole thing. So this is HTTPS, so that thing is working as it should. And then what we can do is grab that full URL. And if we look back at the documentation in GitHub, we can see it's basically just our URL for our site and then slash GraphQL. So that's the endpoint. So we'll do jschallenges.com and then GraphQL. That will be the endpoint. Now, keep in mind, the starter template, that has all, all we've done so far. Uh, we will need to install all of the packages, all the dependencies. So we'll let that uh, let that go and run. But again, this is coming from this template from Colby Fayok here in GitHub. And uh, we added our hosting for uh, a WordPress site, basically as our headless CMS in Hostinger. With that thing uh, installed, we added our extension for GraphQL, and now we're trying to get that up and running. Now, if you didn't know this, I do want to share, I have recently started a podcast with Amy Dutton called Compressed FM, where we talk about, uh, we do weekly episodes on web development and web design. So if you're interested in learning more about those, make sure to check us out uh, on Spotify and anywhere else that you listen to podcasts. So make sure to check that out. And let's go ahead and check. Looks like all of our uh, packages have installed. Let's do an NPM run dev now and see how this thing uh, hopefully is up and running. So let's uh, open this up on uh, port 3000 and it may still be loading for a second. Uh, I'll take a sip of coffee and then we'll see what we got. All right, and it is up and running. So this is, uh, this is the default template here. Notice I've got the hello world uh, blog post that is there. And then also, if you look in Next.js, you can see it's doing lots of stuff for us. So it's generating those dynamic pages based on the slug. It's doing a site map. It's doing a feed XML. It's basically everything you would need in a complete starter, which hopefully is what you expected. So let's do one more thing. Let's go into the WordPress dashboard. Let's go back to the dashboard here. And then let's add another post. So let's go into post. Let's do an add new. Oh, and this is the new uh, like Gutenberg editor, I think. So let's call this a testy test post. Uh, post title is fine. Let's scroll down to have a little bit of content inside of this. So let's just add a piece of text content, a paragraph, say, hey, this is a really good post. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and publish that. If that thing is published, then um, the pages inside of our JS challenges are built statically. So this won't show up. So what we need to do is actually restart our site so that it goes through another one of those build processes to processes to grab all of those posts. So let's start, let's start this up one more time. And we should see this new post is live, ready to go on our local Next.js site. All right. looks like that thing has finished. Let's give a refresh to our page. Hopefully what we'll see is now we have two posts. Sweet. So there's our testy test and there's our hello world. So all that stuff is working and connected. The template did most of the work. Hostinger did the hosting and then it was all up and running. All right. So that was pretty sweet. I really enjoyed this. Next.js is my favorite framework. I love the idea of WordPress as a headless CMS. I think sometimes it gets written off, but it still is super useful. And especially if you're doing client work, clients, non-developers, even developers, are pretty familiar or often familiar with WordPress, so it makes sense as a backend. Uh, I do want to do, I've been doing community shout outs at the end of my videos. I've already done it a couple times, but definitely check out Colby Fayok on uh, on Twitter, on YouTube, and a few different places, and especially his Next.js uh, WordPress template on Starter Template on GitHub. So make sure to check him out as the community shout out for today. Hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know if you uh, have used WordPress as a headless CMS and if you may be interested in using it now uh, and then maybe where you would host it if you had the opportunity as well. So put those in the comments below. 
Let me know. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.